Me and my team built some online practice questions for the ITLV4 exam, absolutely free. All you have to do is click the link, which is joshmaticor.tech slash ITIL, and you can start practicing right away, absolutely for free. So in this video, just so you know what to expect, I'm gonna cover why you might wanna get ITIL, like why would you even bother with it in the first place? I'm gonna talk about how to actually use the practice questions because there's an offline component to them as well. And I'm gonna go over a few strategies that I found on Reddit that you can use to pass the ITIL version for exam. And after you finish going through ITIL and pass your exam, definitely check out my hands-on IT course. It's delivered in the cloud. We go over all those really basic stuff that you required to know as a help desk person, like ticketing systems. We cover Active Directory, networking, virtual machines, and some cloud computing, as well as like a section to redo your resume, build a portfolio, and we even go over how to look for jobs as well. A bunch of people have gone through this course already, found jobs with it, had a lot of success. Definitely check it out. I'll put a link for that in the description. So why you would even consider getting ITIL? So aside from the knowledge it gives you obviously that's going to be useful for your career it has a lot of job hits across a lot of job boards like indeed like if you go to indeed and you just search itil it has more hits than comptia a plus and as of today it has more hits than the, the word like the actual word comptia as well so if you have itil on your resume it's definitely going to help for pattern matching and like keyword matching when recruiters are you know, looking for people to fill jobs, or when you go to apply to a job that requires ITIL, it's gonna help if you have it on your resume. And not only this, if you don't have a bachelor's degree yet, WGU has a whole bunch of IT bachelor's degree programs, and most of them, I think maybe possibly even all of them, require ITIL for one of the classes. So if you end up getting ITIL and you want a bachelor's degree in the future, having this cert will automatically knock off one of the classes for that degree. And I do want to mention while we're on that topic, a lot of the degrees at WGU require more than just ITIL, they require like a whole bunch of third party certs. I have a whole bunch of practice questions done already, not just ITIL, but like A plus, Network plus, Security plus, CSSP. A lot of these certs satisfy classes for a lot of the tech degrees at WGU. So again, if you're interested in going to WGU, definitely check out this video. I'll talk about how to get a degree super fast using study.com. And you can also use my free practice questions to help kind of pre-study and help you to pass the degree much faster than otherwise. So that's just something to think about. So hopping right into things on how to actually use the deck, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to joshmaticore.tech slash ITIL, and you'll be redirected to this page. And then you can select, you know, part one or part two. I just split the exam into two different sections and you can just start practicing. And they are multiple choice. So when you click an answer, it'll show you incorrect or correct. And I'll show you an answer explanation as well as a page number in the book that the question came from. All of the questions are completely customized, but basically the way you can think about it is every single like section of the book, like every single paragraph has a question that corresponds to it in like the, the online deck, right? So instead of reading the book, technically you could just go through the questions and then learn things that way. But if you did want to get the book, I'll put a link to the book in the description, but there's also links inside of the practice exam as well, like inside of the explanation. Another way you can kind of enhance your studying with this is when you answer one of the questions and you don't quite like understand what it's saying or you think it might be wrong, right? You can copy the whole question, like the multiple choice section and the answers, and you can go to chat GPT and you can say like, please answer this question. It's an ITIL version four question please explain your answer. And then you can paste like the questions, right? The question with a multiple choice in there and send it to GPT and it will kind of answer it. And then you can compare the answer to the one that's on the practice question. And you can kind of read the explanation that GPT gives you just to kind of learn more about it. And of course, chat GPT is not perfect, but you can, you can usually like corroborate what it's saying with Google or other sources if you, if you feel like you need to. There's also an offline Anki version of this deck as well. So if you want to like use it in the car when you don't have reception, not when you're driving, of course, or if you're going on a trip, if you want to use it like at the airport or in the airplane on your phone or something like this, when you don't have reception, you can download the offline deck. It uses Anki, right? So you just have to install Anki on whatever the device is that you're using it. And Anki is free, except for the iOS store for some reason. I don't know why it's like not free on there. But in order to get that, all you have to do is enter your email address here, and then it will get sent to you in your email. Just make sure to check your junk because it might get sent to junk for sometimes. I don't know why it does that. But it, it can be really useful, especially if you want to keep track of the progress like that you've done, like which cards you've looked at, how often you've seen different cards, like how many times you've seen different cards, and it will keep track of the, the answers that you got wrong, right? So you can go back and say like, oh, show me only the ones that I've gotten wrong. So the offline deck has a lot more functionality, and it also incorporates 
um, spaced repetition, which is like a, a smart learning algorithm, which will show you certain cards that you get wrong more often and the cards you get correct, it will show you those left less often, kind of enhancing your learning experience. And I, I basically use a style of learning to learn almost like everything where I had to cram a large amount of information. Like even when I'm studying Japanese, like all of my degrees, I use this style of learning. So the offline deck is pretty good. Uh, definitely check that out. Just put your email address in, it will get sent to your email. So getting into how to actually pass ITIL version four, it's been uh, quite a long time since I've taken this exam, probably like eight years. I do have this. Um, I might've taken ITIL version three. I can't really remember. But at the time that I took it, it's like quite easy compared to a lot of other third party exams. And the consensus at that time was to just get a reliable set of practice questions and just drill them like over the weekend and you can pass the exam, which is actually what I did. I think I studied for like, um, seven days with some like random set of practice questions. Um, I, I kind of looked through Reddit and the sentiment still seems to be the same these days. You can kind of look through these posts. I'll put them in, I'll put links for these in the description, but basically like people study anywhere from like one day to two weeks with a, a reliable set of practice questions. And that's enough for them to, to pass the exam. So a, a trend that I noticed people saying is make sure you understand like the ITIL terminology and then make sure you do enough practice questions um, you know, an adequate amount, and then you can go ahead and take the exam. Again, the practice questions that I made, they were directly from this book, which is kind of, which is one of the recommended books. So you could just read these, you know, read these threads and you can pick practice questions from there, or you can use my practice questions. Just go through all of them, make sure you understand the question, make sure you understand the answer and like why the correct answer is correct. Just go through them adequately and then schedule your exam and pass it. And after you pass ITIL, again, feel free to check out my IT course. There's kind of like a free intro course, a long video explanation that talks about it in depth. I think it's really good. It has helped a lot of people get jobs. And if you don't have a bachelor's degree yet, and that's something that you're interested in getting, which um, if you want to be highly employable to a broad range of employers, I'd recommend getting one considering how cheap it can be these days. Definitely check out this video. I go into depth on how you can really save a lot of cost and time on your bachelor's degree. I myself have two bachelors from WGU and a master's and all of them have cost less than less than $5,000, like five or $6,000. All of them have been like less than this. So it's, it's really affordable these days. So yeah, definitely check that out. I'll put links for everything I talked about in this video in the description and we will see you in the next video.